All right, let's continue our biochemistry playlist talking about titration of amino acids. This is the fourth video on the series on amino acids. If you haven't watched the previous three, you will never understand anything. Here are your 20 proteogenic amino acids. Each one has a name, three letter abbreviation and a one letter abbreviation. Amino acids are amphoteric. They have a basic part, acidic part. They can accept a proton, they can donate a proton. Who will decide? The pH of the medium will decide. Are you in an acidic environment or in a basic environment? In an acidic environment, the ionizable group will gain a proton because the acid has too much proton to give. All right, how about in a basic solution? Basic solution doesn't have any protons. All right, so you will lose protons and give it to the solution in order to try to achieve equilibrium. This is how you create order from chaos. So when the pH of the medium is low, ionizable groups are becoming more pronated. They are gaining a proton. But in a basic solution with high pH, the ionizable groups are becoming depronated. They are losing protons. In his famous book, Charles Dickens said, they can accept protons, they can donate protons. He was talking about amino acids and their amphoteric properties. If you remember my videos on pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, I've told you that a singular drug can have non-ionized portion and ionized portion at the same freaking time. What determines the degree of ionization, the pKa of the drug and the pH of the medium in which the drug is present? What if pK and pH are equal at that point? you will have 50% of the drug as non-ionized and 50% of the drug as ionized. So what is the pK? It's the pH at which the non-ionized portion equals the ionized portion. In other words, the pK is the pH at which the protonated fraction equals the deprotonated fraction, 50-50. So when the pK equals the pH, the protonated equals the deprotonated. Hashtag equality. To understand the difference between pH and pK, imagine that metacosis is swimming in the water. Okay, metacosis is the pK. The water has a pH. All right, the water can get colder or warmer. It can get more acidic or basic, but metacosis does not change. Same thing, pK is a freaking constant for a singular molecule. The pH is the pH of the medium. You can add some acid to the medium to make it more acidic. In this case, the pH will go down. Or you can add more bases to the medium to make it more basic. In this case, pH will go up. But the pKa is the pKa. Metacosis is metacosis. It's a constant. So there are three rules. If you understand them, you will answer any question correctly. Rule number one, pK is the pH at which half is protonated and half is deprotonated and they equal each other. But what if the pK is greater than the pH? Imagine that the amino acid exists in an acidic environment because an acidic environment will have a very low pH to the point that pK exceeds the pH. All right, you put me in an acidic environment, I'll give you more protons. Yep, the protonated fraction will exceed the deprotonated fraction because this is a freaking acidic medium compared to the pKa. Conversely, if the pKa is lower than the pH, then the protonated form is lower than the deprotonated form. If you want to make it easy on you, always start with the pKa, all right? And always start with the protonated. So pK protonated. Nice. And then when this is greater than, this is greater than. When this is less than, this is going to be less than. When this is equal, this is equal. Duh. An amino acid has an amino group and a carboxyl group. Each one has a separate pKa because this is Peter, this is Paul. Since an amino acid has two groups that can be protonated, the same amino acid will have two pKa's. What if the amino acid has three groups? Then it will have three pKa's. So let's say that this is carboxyl group and it has a pKa one of about two. How about this one? Has another pKa of about 10. They are not the same. What if you put this amino acid in a medium that has a pH of two? Well, at this point, half of the carboxyl group will be protonated, the other half will be deprotonated. So let's do this. First thing, you write the three equations and let's go at a pH of one, what's gonna happen? Look at the first pKa, about two. The second pKa, about 10, all right. Is the pKa greater than pH? 
here, yeah, two is greater than one and 10 is greater than one. Therefore, both of them, carboxyl and amino acid will be what? In the protonated, they will be fully protonated. What does that mean? Protonated means proton, H. Therefore, you will see it as COOH and not as COO. And you will see this as NH3 plus rather than NH2 because this has more protons. And at this moment in time, you have NH3 on one side and COOH on the other one. Okay, this one has no charge. This one has a positive charge. Therefore, the entire amino acid is positive. Thank you so much. Let's change the pH. Now the pH is six. Let's talk about Mr. COOH. All right, is the pK greater than the pH? Two is not greater than the six. Therefore, we follow rule number three. When the pK is lower than pH, the deprotonated will exceed the protonated. Oh, look at this. Most of this is COO negative, deprotonated baby. How about the other doofus, the amino group? Look at it. The pK is 10. Is this greater or lower than the pH of 6? This is greater. Therefore, more protonated, please. I exist in the NH3+. Plus. Therefore, my carboxyl exists in the COO negative, but my amino exists in the NH3 positive. A positive wing and a negative wing. That's why this entire amino acid is neutral. It is dipolar. It has a positive pole and a negative pole. We call this a Zwitter ion. So the Zwitter ion in German means hybrid. So if you're driving a Toyota Prius in Germany, they call it Zwitter ion. I'm just joking. But what if the pH of the solution is about 7.4, which is the normal pH in your arterial blood? Now pause and review. It's the same answer as when the pH is six because this lies in between two and 10. It's again a Zwitter ion. Now, what if the pH is freaking 11? Oh, 11. All right, let's start with Mr. Carboxyl. All right, is two greater than or lower than 11? Of course, uh, two is less than 11. Therefore, I exist in the deprotonated. Thank you so much. How about the amino side? 10 is lower than 11. Oh, also deprotonated. So I exist in NH2 rather than NH3. Look at my two wings. The first wing has a negative. The second wing is neutral. So... What's the entire amino acid? The entire amino acid is negative. Now let's talk about the titration of the amino acid before you freak out. Oh my goodness, shut up, it's easy. What does titration mean? Gradual change, gradual change, that's it. Look at this beautiful graph. You have pH here, pH of the medium. Is it more acidic or more basic? And here is OH, not H, OH. As you know, OH is basic. So as you go from here to here, we are adding more bases to the solution. And therefore, what's going to happen to the pH as you add more bases, it's going to go up. And that's why we're going upwards in this direction. As you increase the bases, pH is going to rise. Let's talk about titration of freaking glycine. Write the three equations down. First, if the pH is 1, oh, we're here. Regarding the carboxyl, oh, 1 is less than 2.3. In other words, the pKa is greater than the pH. Therefore, what? More protonated, please. This will be COOH, and the other one will be NH3+. And the glycine will exist in this shape. NH3+, COOH, all of them are protonated. Keep adding more bases, more bases, more bases. pH is gonna rise and rise and rise until you plateau. Why did I plateau? Because at this moment, the pH of the solution is equal to the pKa1, which is of the carboxyl group, around 2.3. So you plateau. Translation, the pH, the y-axis, is not changing because you are a horizontal line. This is not changing. When the pH is not changing, we call this a buffer. Keep adding more bases, more bases, more bases until the pH is now around 6. Okay, do it for the carboxyl group and you will find that it's existing in the deprotonated form. However, do it for the amino, oh, still protonated. And at that moment, which is a pH of around 6, the glycine or the amino acid is existing in this form. NH3 protonated, COO deprotonated. This is a Zwitter ion. Keep adding more bases to the solution. pH is going to keep rising and rising and rising because you're making it more basic. Now, if you do the numbers, oh, 13 is greater than 2.3. It's also greater than 9.6. At this moment in time, both are deprotonated and glycine exists in this form. Deprotonated, deprotonated. 
But before we reached 13, we were at 9.6, and at this moment, the pKa2 equals the pH. Therefore what? Therefore, I am here. I am plateauing. The pH is not increasing or decreasing. When the pH is not changing, what do you call this? A buffer. Here is a concept for you. All right. As you know, the amino acid had pKa1 and pKa2. All right. Can you take an average? Yeah. An average of anything is first plus second over two. Let's say that we have two brothers, Raj and Amitab. Raj scored 10 on the exam. Amitab scored 14 on the exam. What's the average? 10 plus 14 over two. Same thing here. If the carboxyl has a pK and the amino has a pK, add them together, divide them by two, that's the average. What do you call this average? Of course, professors gotta make everything more difficult. They call it the PI. What the flip is that? It is the point of isoelectricity. What in the world is that? It's the pH at which the molecule is electrically neutral. Look at these three forms. Here is a form, here is a form, here is a form. Which one is electrically neutral? Oh, this one, because I have a positive wing and negative wing. This is the sweeter ion. Look at this, look at this. What is the pH of this? You go down and you intersect with here. Oh, look at here, 5.95. This is your pi. How did you get the 5.95? Easy. What was the pKa here? 2.3. And the pKa here? 9.6. Add them, divide by 2, 5.95. It is the pH at which the amino acid is freaking neutral. Next, let's talk about the concept of the slope. What's the slope? A slope is the change in the vertical axis over the change in the horizontal axis. In this case, it's delta y over delta x. Also, the slope equals tan theta. What's theta? Theta is the angle between the x-axis and the y-axis. This angle right here. Let me ask you a question. Line A, line B, and line C. Which one has the greatest slope? Oh, whoever has the greatest angle. Of course, C, look at this angle, has the bigger angle. It's bigger than B, and it's bigger than A. So C has the bigger slope. In other words, the bigger the angle, the bigger the slope. C, by the way, is more vertical than B, and B is more vertical than A. So we can say that the more vertical the line, the greater its slope. The more steep the line, the greater its slope. Conversely, the more horizontal the line, the lower the slope. So look here, you have a green line and a purple line. Which one has a higher slope? Of course, the more vertical. This is a higher slope than this. And what's the slope? The change in the y-axis over the change on the x-axis. It's the change in pH. So you see here, at that moment, I have the high slope and I have the highest change in pH. Look, at pH is going from here to here. That's a huge change. We went from like three to nine or whatever. At this interval, you have the high slope and the greatest sensitivity to changes in pH. On the other hand, look at this. Oh, it's horizontal. It has the lowest slope, therefore minimal to no change. The pH is not budging an inch to the pH. When the pH is not changing, we call this what? Buffer. This is a buffer. This is a buffer because they are horizontal, but this is not a buffer. Glycine versus glutamic acid. Glycine is easy, remember? Stage one, stage two, stage three. In the beginning, here was positive wing, here was no charges. So the net result is positive. Let's call it positive one because this is positive and this is nothing. So it's a positive and this is just one positive. Let's look here. Positive wing, negative wing. What's the net? What's the total? It's neutral, zero, sweeter ion. Later, it became negative. This is negative and this is nothing, so negative one. From here to here, this was deprotonation. Another deprotonation, you go from here to here. Let's do it for glutamic acid, but glutamic acid is unique. Look at it and respect it. It has COOH and COO. Oh, two of them. Yes, indeed. So in the beginning, positive one, because this is just one positive. Deprotonated once. Look at that. CO negative, and that's a sweeter ion. Deprotonated again. You have two negatives and one positive, which gives you a negative one. You can do it again. So you have negative, negative, and nothing. And this will be negative two, mind you. Peter and Paul are not the same. That's why each one has its own unique pKa. Same thing here. We have Peter, we have Paul, and we have Raj. Each one has a different pK. Let's look at glycine. Here is glycine. How do you get the pI? Easy. 9.6 plus 2.3 over 2. You get 5.95. 5. 
Let's do it for freaking glutamic acid. You have 9.6, 2.3, and 4.2. Which two numbers should you use? Well, think about it. The addition of an extra carboxyl group has rigged the system. We only use the carboxyls. Oh, because these are two and this is only one. So shut up. We'll talk about these. 2.3 plus 4.2 over 2, you get 3.25. The PI of glycine was 5.95, but the PI of this freaking glutamic acid is 3.25. Translation, glutamic acid becomes neutral at a lower pH compared to glycine because the PI is the pH at which the molecule is electrical neutral. Since the PI of glutamic acid is lower than the PI of the glycine, therefore glutamic acid will become neutral at a lower pH compared to glycine. Lysine, remember, uh, I promised you a great story about lysine. So lysine is a totally different system. Now, this doofus has two aminos, so it has rigged the game. So forget about the carboxyl, we'll add the amino to the R. So 9.6 plus 9.9 .9 over 2, you get 9.75. Of course, this is higher than glycine. It's also higher than the PI of the glutamic acid. Therefore, lysine becomes neutral at a higher pH compared to glycine. It's also higher than that of glutamic acid. So if you want to put them all together, here's the PI. If you're talking about a neutral amino acid, you count the amino and the carboxyl. But here, if it's acidic, you count the R and the carboxyl, forget about the amino. If it's basic, forget about the carboxyl. And here is the best slide in the entire video. How do I determine the amino acid type? Look at the PI only, all right? The PI is six, that's probably a neutral amino acid such as glycine, because the PI of glycine was about 5.95. That's about six. If the PI is less than six, oh, that's an acidic amino acid, amino acid with a acidic side chain such as glutamic acid. How do I remember it? I remember it because the peak I is the pH at which, right? So think about it as the pH. Of course, when the pH is low, we say acidic. When the pH is high, we say basic. Same thing here. When the pI is low, we say acidic. When the pI is high, we say basic. The only difference is the neutral pH is about 7, but the neutral pI is about 6. Some pearls for the pros. What's the difference between amino and amine or amino? Okay, amino is C bound to N with a single bond. But look at amino, double bond. Don't forget the pH and the pKa. They are also involved in something else called the henderson hasselbalch equation. What if the numerator equaled the denominator? Now, when this equals this, the ratio is going to be 1. What's the log 1? 0, baby. And now the pH equals the pK. Of course, as you add more bicarbonate, pH goes up. And as you add more carbon dioxide, pH goes down. If you want to learn more about the pH, check out my acid-base imbalance course on my website, medicosisperfectsnellis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectsnellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.